All right, for decades, the United States has been footing the bill for the safety and the security of the European continent, and all while many of our allies all across the Atlantic fail to live up to their commitments. Now, today in Brussels, President Trump made it perfectly clear the U.S. taxpayer is not and no longer going to be Europe's ATM machine. Take a look at this. Many countries uh, owe us a tremendous amount of money for many years back where they're delinquent, as far as I'm concerned, because the United States has had to pay for them. So if you go back 10 or 20 years, you'll just add it all up. It's massive amounts of money is owed. Germany is just paying a little bit over 1%. Whereas the United States, in actual numbers, is paying 4.2 percent of a much larger GDP. So I think that's inappropriate also. You know, we're protecting Germany, we're protecting France, we're protecting everybody, and yet we're paying a lot of money to protect. Now, this has been going on for decades. This has been brought up by other presidents, but other presidents never did anything about it because I don't think they understood it or they just didn't want to get involved. But I have to bring it up because I think it's very unfair to our country. It's very unfair to our taxpayer. And I think that these countries have to step it up, not over a 10-year period. They have to step it up immediately. Now, the president, he's absolutely right. And even the secretary general of NATO is backing up President Trump. Let's take a look at this. We are going to discuss many important issues at the summit. Among them is defense spending. And we all agree that we have to do more. I agree with you that we have to make sure that allies are investing more. The good news is that the allies have started to invest more in defense. Uh, after years of cutting defense budgets, they have started to uh, add billions to their defense budgets. And uh, last year was the biggest increase uh, in defense spending across Europe and Canada in a generation. Why was that last year? It's also because of your leadership, because your uh, right. message. Numbers don't lie, so let's do something the mainstream media would never do. We're going to break down those numbers. Now, the North Atlantic Treaty Organization, or NATO, it was first utilized as a unified military deterrent to the looming Soviet threat and to provide intercontinental stability throughout Western Europe and North America. It was formed after two world wars actually devastated the European continent. It took the lives of hundreds of thousands of American heroes. Now, NATO has a massive budget, around a trillion dollars. Now, this year, the United States contributed over $700 billion to that budget. All right, let's compare that to the rest of our allies. The next highest contribution, well, that would come from the United Kingdom. They only contribute 61.5 billion. Germany, a mere 51 billion. Canada comes in, frankly, at an embarrassingly low 21 billion. And the country where NATO is headquartered, Belgium, they contribute only $5 billion. In fact, the United States, you, the American taxpayer, you're on the hook for 70% of NATO's expenses. Now, that's right. You, we, pay 70 cents of every dollar that NATO spends. And while all NATO allies agreed to contribute at least 2% of the country's overall GDP to the NATO budget, the U.S. is only, get this, only one of four nations to actually follow through on that agreement and that standard. The United States actually contributes, well, almost double, 3.5% of our massive GDP to NATO's budget. And meanwhile, it's a much different story among our allies. Take a look at your screen. Economic powerhouse Germany, they only contribute 1.24%, not the 2%. And three Western European countries, well, they contribute less than even 1%. So that's right, one country, our country, we're proud of, the United States of America is now bearing the financial burden of NATO and the protection of Europe and North America, while 27 other countries sadly are laughing all the way to the bank. So tonight, under the president's leadership, America, he's putting them on notice, will no longer be the world's piggy bank, and our allies must pay, pay their fair share. And of course, this includes the de facto leader of the EU, Germany, while one of Europe's wealthiest nations fails to properly fund NATO. Get this, and the president pointed this out today, they're spending billions of dollars in Russia in order to support massive energy trade deals. In other words, Germany, they're not going to adequately fund the protection of their own country, but they're more than happy to prop up one of NATO's so-called biggest threats, the one they keep telling us about, the bad actor, Putin, in the bad country of Russia. And earlier today, the president called out the German chancellor, Angela Merkel, for her country's blatant double standard. It's about time. Take a look. I think uh, it's very sad 
when Germany makes a massive oil and gas deal with Russia, where you're supposed to be guarding against Russia, and Germany goes out and pays billions and billions of dollars a year to Russia. I think that's very inappropriate. And the former chancellor of Germany is the head of the pipeline company that's supplying the gas. Uh, ultimately, Germany will have almost 70 percent of their country controlled by Russia with natural gas. So you tell me, is that appropriate? I mean, we, I've been complaining about this from the time I got in. It should have never been allowed to have happened. But Germany is totally controlled by Russia because they were getting from 60 to 70 percent of their energy from Russia and a new pipeline. And you tell me if that's appropriate, because I think it's not. And I think it's a very bad thing for NATO, and I don't think it should have happened. Now, Merkel responded with what was a vague, indirect, frankly pathetic statement, lamenting the country's history under Soviet control. But now, how can someone possibly make the case that Donald Trump is compromised by Russia or Vladimir Putin? He actually is urging Merkel to get their energy from us, the United States of America, and by the way, end their dependence on Russia. Now, this is a move that would literally cripple Russia's fragile economy. And by the way, if Russia's economy falters, Vladimir Putin is finished. So, so much for all the media conspiracies, almost two years now, all the lies saying Donald Trump is compromised by Vladimir Putin. Now, imagine how many, just for a second, high paying career jobs could be created in the United States of America if we would get those billions and billions of dollars and we were importing our natural gas to Germany, of which, by the way, we have an abundance of more than we could use in hundreds of years. And as you might imagine, President Trump's, his tough talk in Brussels was met with absolute predictable hysteria from the mainstream media and, of course, their best friends in the Democratic Party. Now, after spending 18 months warning us all the sky is falling because of the fake, phony narrative, the witch hunt, that Donald Trump was somehow Vladimir Putin's puppet. The left is now in a total freakout mode that Donald Trump today used a lot of anti-Russia rhetoric and demanding that countries pay their fair share. And by the way, that's supposed to lead us now to catastrophe. You can't win with these people. In other words, a typical Trump-hating day in the media with their Democratic allies. And as always, we've got all the tape to prove it. Take a look. It's a ludicrous uh, demand that he's making here. The EU was meant to get around and away from that toxic nationalism, right? But who's bringing it back? Donald Trump. America first is toxic nationalism. It is unprecedented language. It is a real threat to the alliance. It's a threat to the democratic, liberal, post-war world order that Harry Truman himself signed into, into being with the NATO declaration 70 years ago. Frankly, it's just infuriating to watch this happen. You cannot imagine any American president all the way back 75 years deciding to become the critic in chief of NATO. I mean, it's Orwellian. It's infuriating to see this happen. It's diplomatic malpractice. And there's a lot more. All right, so think of it this way. You have the leaders of the Democratic Party. Well, they have no vision for the country. you got Nancy Pelosi, Chucky e. Schumer. Now, remember, their agenda for 2018 is very, very simple. Oh, they want their crumbs back. They want to impeach Trump, but don't say it. They want open borders. They want to keep Obamacare, and they don't want... Judge Kavanaugh on the bench or any Trump choice. Anyway, they released a st statement, a joint statement, bashing Trump and said, quote, President Trump's brazen insults and denigration of America's most steadfast allies, Germany, is an embarrassment. His behavior this morning is another profoundly disturbing signal that the president is more loyal to Russian President Vladimir Putin than to our NATO allies. Actually, just the opposite is true. So, okay, what are Pelosi and Schumer? What are they afraid of Putin? Why do they want to make Russia rich again? Why? So the American taxpayers, all of you are footing the bill for over 70% of NATO? Liberals, by the way, they are so generous with your money. And by the way, why don't they encourage Germany to buy our natural gas like the president is? It's important to remember, this is all coming from America's so-called elites, the very same people who think they know best. The same people who think giving billions of dollars to Iran and the mullahs in Iran, that was a wonderful idea. It's going to bring us peace in our time. 
the same people who thought bribing North Korea, as Bill Clinton tried in the 1990s, would prevent them from building nuclear weapons. Didn't work out that way. The same people who actually cringe at the thought of America again leading on the world stage. And the same people who sadly, but routinely, look down on you, us, we, the American people. Remember, you're the irredeemable deplorables. You're the ones that cling to your God, your guns, your Bible, your religion. Yeah, those same people. Take a look. You go into some of these small towns in, in, in Pennsylvania, a lot of, like a lot of small towns in the Midwest, yeah, the jobs have been gone now for 25 years and nothing's replaced them. And they've gone through the Clinton administration and the Bush administration. And each successive administration has said, that somehow these communities are going to regenerate, and they have not. So it's not surprising then that they get better and they cling to guns or religion or uh, antipathy towards people who aren't like them. You know, to just be grossly generalistic, you could put half of Trump supporters into what I call the basket of deplorables. <laughs> right? The racist, sexist, homophobic, xenophobic, Islamophobic, you name it. Same playbook. We'll see it all throughout this election year. Judge Kavanaugh and his family will experience. Nothing changes. They don't have any vision to make the country better. Now, in 2016, Peter Strzok texted that he could actually smell Trump voters in a rural Virginia Walmart. He can smell us. I like Walmart. And just yesterday, well, you have MSNBC conspiracy anchor thrill up his leg, Chris Matthews, comparing Trump supporters, believe it or not, taking it a step further. Untamed dogs. You don't believe me? Let's take a look. He's taking a Republican Party, a grassroots party that spent 60, 70 years leading the war in the Cold War, hating the Russians for their aggressiveness in the world and taking over countries on their border and being tyrannical the way they are now. And he has those people cheering against Western Europe, which is liberal and democratic and free market, and attacking them while saying how Trump... Agreeing with Trump, says he's doing his best. It's remarkable to think that and one the of the most... dog, he's dog training these people. Oh, that's what they really think of us. Now, these same elites in the media, they're celebrating the widespread anti-Trump protests that are going to be taking place this week throughout Europe. One of the reasons we're here. And as we discussed last night, they're all forgetting, you know, history does repeat itself. Remember Ronald Reagan? President Reagan faced the same backlash, same demonstrations before his policy of peace through strength, trust but verify, the evil empire, tear down this wall, which spurred some of the most historic diplomatic achievements in world history. President Trump could now be poised to follow in those footsteps. We could all hope. And we'll have more on the president's trip throughout Europe, throughout the show. But we do have other important breaking news on the domestic front. Trump hating former FBI lawyer Lisa Page today did not comply with her subpoena and flat out refused to testify before a closed door session of Congress. She sounds a little like Hillary. And earlier today, the House Judiciary Committee Chairman Bob Goodlatte he voiced this very important concern. Let's take a look at this. It does appear that Lisa Page apparently has something to hide. Uh, she has been in complete defiance of cooperation with the House Judiciary Committee and the Oversight and Government Reform Committee for seven months now, dating back to the first letter we wrote to the Department of Justice in December of last year asking for her appearance. There have been two subsequent letters and two subpoenas issued for her appearance, and she has defied all of that. Now, when she says that uh, she has not had ample time to prepare, that is belied by now, the president those also reacted today. He tweeted out, quote, ex FBI lawyer Lisa Page today defied a House of Representatives and issued subpoena to testify before Congress. Wow. But is anybody really surprised? Together with her lover, FBI agent Peter Strzok, she worked on the rigged witch hunt, perhaps the most tainted and corrupt case ever. Yeah, the media ignores that. Now the window is fast closing for Lisa Page. She must either comply with the subpoena. By the way, if this happened to us, we'd be in big trouble. 
or she will face serious legal consequences, including a, a contempt of Congress citation. And meanwhile, her corrupt FBI boyfriend, Peter Strzok, well, he's still set to testify in public tomorrow. Get ready. This hearing is going to be explosive. We will have full analysis and reaction to Peter Strzok's time in the hot seat tomorrow if he shows up.